Good morning, everybody. My name is Golnaz. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Jones and his team uh, for organizing this um, conference. I've learned a lot, and uh, it's a great pleasure to meet you all. I would also like to thank Linfield College for their hospitality and having us here. The title of my presentation is Spatial Suitability Analysis for Site Selection of Vineyards Using Biophysical Models and Computational intelligence. During next few minutes, I'm going to give you a brief introduction, talk about materials and methods, discuss some of the results, and then wrap it up. But why we do care about land assessment? Well, if you want to acquire the full potential of your land resources and develop a sustainable agricultural system, at some point you want to consider land assessment. Ideally and traditionally, what would, uh, one would go to the site, do the assessment there, do some uh, soil sampling, measure the elevation, and then do some analysis, later on decide about the fate of a site. However, this is not the case always because maybe you have a big study area or you have limitations such as time or money. Uh, therefore, you want to have a tool to narrow down the areas that you need to visit and kind of prioritize uh, the study area. Therefore, you might want to consider using various uh, technological tools. Among various tools that are available, Geoinformation Science or GIS is uh, one of the most robust tools that are out there. Uh, you can store, manipulate, analyze, visualize various types of spatial data using a GIS system and it's been used uh, for land assessment for quite a while. And why they are good for grapes? Well, as you all know, grapevine requires a distinct fusion of different environmental variables uh, for their growth and development. Site selection for development of a new vineyard is one of the most important decisions a grower makes because it directly affects the quality of grapes and uh, also their yield, hence their final income. So our, uh, our overall objective was to develop a spatial site assessment that can be used for research, extension, education, and to help anybody who is interested to know more about the impact of different environmental variables on the grapevine performance. For our uh, system, we focused on three main components, uh, being weather, topography, and soil. We combined them uh, using fuzzy logic, which I'm going to discuss a little bit more later on. And then after we developed the vineyard potential scale, we wanted to evaluate our system, our model, to see how well it's doing. So the study area was uh, in Washington state, and uh, as you can see here in the map, we are located in the um, Pacific Northwest uh, region of the United States. We not only focused on uh, Washington, but we also included some parts of uh, Northeastern Oregon because they share some of the AVAs. Washington State um, is uh, expanded between um, 45 to 49 um, latitude and the uh, longitude is uh, minus 116 to minus uh, 124. The elevation ranges between sea level to almost 4,000 meters. As you can see here, this is the land cover map. So uh, in Washington, we have a mountain range called Cascades, which traps most of the uh, moisture that comes from ocean in the left, uh, which is Seattle area. And therefore, um, the Puget Sound is a very wet area compared to eastern part of Washington. Here you can see. So people here um, are under the effect of the rain shadow, and they are dependent on water for their agriculture. They need water rights for that. So here is the uh, distribution of different areas in the state of Washington and some of them are shared between Washington and Oregon. So 
the core of our model was biophysical environment. We focused on the um, climate, weather, and, and soil and topography. And also later on, you know, you can add more layers, the softer layers such as pests and diseases, land cover, water rights, management strategies, land ownership, you know, sustainability, so on and so forth. But for now, we focused on a biophysical environment and we also included land cover and water rights because they are important for Washington State. So why fuzzy logic? Um, well, it takes good care of uh, uncertainty. Fuzzy logic is unlike binary system. So in binary system, you have true or false, zero or one. Um, so, but in fuzzy logic, you have degrees of truth. It's like a gray scale. So it provides a kind of continuous classification between zero and one and helps you to uh, classify some of the qualities that um, uh, you have in um, human na uh, natural language. So um, you, you don't have um, like uh, very crisp values for something like uh, a soil that is well drained highly well drained, you know, something like that. So using fuzzy logic, we were thinking that we kind of can quantify something like that. So here is the overall schematic figure of the model. I'm not going to every detail, just to show you that we have all these different components, soil, uh, topography, and weather, and we reclassify them, combine them using fuzzy overlay, and later on uh, applied some waterized uh, land cover maps and finally evaluated the results. Uh, for the sake of comprehension, because you know when you have these various types of classes, it's difficult to um, analyze and decide. We reclassified back the final potential um, scores to five major classes based on what has been suggested on FAO uh, land assessment system. So as you can see here, we had five major classes, and um, they were ranging between zero to one, and each class had uh, a value of 0.2. We also defined six different scenarios based on various uh, bioclimatic indices. So our weather component was mainly um, composed of different bioclimatic indices. But we wanted to see, okay, what, what if we change the bioclimatic indices that we take into our weather component? So for these six different scenarios, what is different is just the weather component, the soil and topography were remaining the same. For the evaluation, we had two different pathways. For uh, one part, we took the land cover map and we extracted the location of um, vineyards that are already established in the state of Washington and we extracted the, um, the vineyard pot potential scores for them. And also, we obtained the location of several vineyards that are known to be premium quality and we also checked their scores to see how well our model is doing. So uh, overall, uh, for the vineyards that are located in the state of Washington, 97% of them were located in high potential um, um, regions. So um, I would say uh, scores higher than 0.8 to 1. And for the premium vineyards, as you can see here, they were scattered all across different AVAs, and all of them had a, a vineyard potential score higher than 0.7. On average, between different um, scenarios, 11.4% uh, uh, of the study area had, um, was within the high potential uh, region, and the restricted area, which was uh, either uh, limited in land cover or they didn't have any water rights, was composing most of the study area. So here are the maps. I'm sorry the uh, legend is not too big, uh, but just to give you an idea from um, top left to bottom right, uh, the six different scenarios, and the dark color is the restricted area, so you know, they, it was either water body or forest or 
you know, uh, residential areas, or they didn't have water rights. So the uh, high potential areas are the uh, green ones, and then uh, the, the, the not at all suitable areas are the red areas. So maybe you cannot see the differences, but I just want to um, um, emphasize on the dynamics between color. So uh, check the yellow and the red areas in different maps. So based on what um, um, climate index we included, you see there is a little bit of uh, dynamic between these different areas. So how we can use this um, database? Of course, you know, we can expand it and later on it can be used for uh, people who want to do queries on their side, know more about the properties of their land, and also maybe make some decisions later on regarding what variety to put on, what they need to do, what sort of management they might want to consider. It can be accessed through cloud uh, services, probably a user interface API, or it can be used through extension services, you know, the people who are there to uh, help growers. Depending on socioeconomic factors, you might want to consider different paths. So overall, uh, we were able to develop this uh, land assessment system, and we were able to uh, successfully apply fuzzy logic for that. Um, among the already established vineyards in the state of Washington, more than 97% of them were located in high potential region, and um, on average, 11.4% of the study area was located in um, high potential region. Uh, we believe that for future studies, it might be good to couple the quality traits of different um, grapes in different areas and see how the model is representing that region. With that, I want to thank whoever helped me during this project and also the funding sources for my research. And thank you all for your kind attention.